morning, I would like to, in a few minutes, talk to you about the biggest shadow. Oh, shadows. How many of you are scared of shadows? No kids put up their hands. <laughs> no, we're not scared of shadows. But let me tell you something. One day, I was, I was just married, okay? I, I've been married for about seven months or so, and we were living in Pretoria, and um, as I was about 23, just married, now I'm the man of the house. Let me tell you. Now I'm the man of my house. 23. <laughs> and, right, suddenly, here at midnight, it was, it was 12.30, about 12.30 here. Suddenly, there's this huge shadow right by my window. Where later or earlier that day, there was no shadow. 12.30, there was a shadow. And there was a huge noise. <laughs> a noise that I can't explain. It, it sounded like <laughs> terrible. And this huge shadow. And I'm getting out of bed, I'm jumping out of bed, and I say, Jesus, if you're coming tonight, I'm ready. Let's go, come on. Full of fire and full of spirit and say, come on. <laughs> but my legs are shaking. And my pants are shaking. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, let this be you, because if it's not you, you're going to see one heck of a fight now. <laughs> It turns out that the huge noise and the shadow, it was genuine, a helicopter, the police helicopter chasing some bad guys, and they were jumping out, you know, on different, over different walls, and they jumped into my yard. And this helicopter had its spotlight on these guys, and that was this massive noise and this shadow that was, was the... Was, was the tree going nuts, right? And, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just scared out of my wits. But I'm the man of the house. <laughs> I was tempted to say my wife said I could say that, but I will not say that. I just, and in that moment, the fear and the trembling and everything that goes with it, if you were ever in such a difficult situation, you would understand, right? Just married, how do I protect, how do I protect my family? Shaken up, glad that in the end, knowing it was just the police chasing somebody that at least did not get into my house, okay? That helps. Now, a few weeks ago, I shared with you out of Joshua chapter one, verse nine, and it says this, be strong, say strong, be courageous, say courageous, yes, do not be afraid. So it's been said, all right, do not be afraid, why? Why can I be strong? Why can I be courageous? Why don't I have to fear? Because why? Because God is with me. Church, I want to say this to you, God is with you. Seems like you don't believe me. It seems like you're looking at me and say, do you know my circumstances? It seems like you're sitting there looking at me thinking, do you know where I'm from? Do you know what I'm experiencing? I want to say, no, I don't. But he does. And the Bible says, he will never leave me nor forsake me. Do you know that one of God's names, Jehovah Shammah, is my very present help in the time of trouble? Very present help in the time of trouble. Now this morning, I want to read to you one verse. And then we're going to look at some other verses as well. But just this one verse out of a very known psalm. A psalm that we know very, 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 very well. Which psalm is that? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Psalm 23. Guys, you can put it on. Awesome, guys. You are following. You're with me. Right. Psalm 23, verse 4. I'm reading it to you out of the New King James Version. Listen to what it says. Are you with me? Listen to what it says. Yeah, I did not know that the guy who wrote New King James Version is an Australian. 
<laughs> he starts with, yeah. Yeah, mate. Right? I didn't know that. It's there. It's right there. He says, yeah. Not yes or truly or even thankfully. No, only yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Listen to me very quickly. There's no running here. Do not try and rush through a valley. When you're in trouble, when you experience trouble, do not try and fix it yourself by running through it. You'll make a mess. David says, yeah, though I walk, don't rush. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't rush. Listen to him. He's not in a hurry. He'll guide you. Though I walk through the valley of what? The shadow of death. I will what? I will fear no evil. Why don't I fear any evil in the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death? Why don't I fear? Why? For you are with me. Church, hear me this morning. You are not alone. If you think you are alone, it's time to stop thinking. And it's time to start remembering. If you feel, if you think you are alone, stop thinking. And start remembering that he was with you in the days of trouble, that he was with you back then, he was with you there, he's with you now, you are never alone. He says, your rod and your staff they comfort me. In the Hebrew language, the writers took these words and they call it the valley of the shadow of death. It's actually in the Hebrew language, it's the valley of deepest darkness. Have you ever experienced that? Some of our valleys have names. Some of our valleys are called failure. Some of our deepest, darkest valleys are called broken relationships. Some of the valleys that we are going through are called sickness. It's called divorce. It's called a valley of robbery and of bankruptcy. It's called like a valley of betrayal. It's called like a valley of unemployment and Man, addiction. Some of the valleys that we go through are called assault and, and, and depression. And yes, there is a valley, the shadow of death. Here's what I want to say to you. And here's what I want you to hear me this morning in the next five or ten minutes or so. God is not afraid of your darkness. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? God is not afraid of your darkness. Here's the thing, right? Here's the amazing thing. He tells us in the very beginning of the book, in Genesis chapter one, verse one to three, listen to what it says. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness, what? Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. From the very beginning we see when there's darkness, God says, I'm here. I'm not afraid of darkness. Listen to what happens in the darkness. In that darkness, it says, and God said, God can speak into every darkness. God can speak into every valley. Your deepest, 
darkest valley. I tell you, God can speak right into it. And this morning, He wants you to hear that He wants to speak into it. This morning, my, my heart's desire is that there will faith will build and rise up within you, knowing that God can do what He said He can do. And so He says this, He says, and God said, let there be light. And what? There was light. <laughs> guys, you are awesome. Just give those guys up there a hand, man. You guys, Dean. When God speaks, things happen. God speaks into your darkness. God speaks into your deepest, darkest depression. I don't know about you. Man, God has set me free from that. Let me tell you, there was a time when you look at me, you would not listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. But to have God speak into my darkness is the most amazing feeling, knowing that He's able and capable to do it. Listen to what one, John 1 verse 1 to 5 says. John 1 verse 1 to 5. In the beginning, we're back there again, was the Word, Jesus. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Isn't that awesome? I have been made in Christ. You have been made in Christ. Amen. That's awesome. Listen. In Him, in, who, in Jesus, was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. <laughs> Jesus. I'm not scared of your darkness. Bring it on. Because my light is greater than your darkness. And he speaks into the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. Church, for those of you who are still wondering and still thinking, maybe wondering how will God get me through this? It's not that God will get you through this. God is with you in it. Yes. He's right there. He says, take my hand. We're going to walk through this valley together. Why do we go through valleys? Here's the most amazing theological answer. I don't know. You sit there and you think, but why am I going through this? I don't know. I wish I did. I don't. But it doesn't matter if I know. And it doesn't even matter if you know. You know what? He knows. And because He knows, He will lead me through this valley. He's speaking into my darkness. He's the light in my darkness. He's there when I feel like I can't see anything. That is why it's so important, like Yori started out this morning, that we will have his perspective on things. That we will see things the way he sees it. In closing, it's quick, isn't it? Look at the person next to you. That was quick. Yeah, right. In closing. I'm going to come back to my topic, the bigger shadow. Because the Bible speaks of a shadow. A shadow that's bigger than the darkness that I can ever experience. The shadow that's, that's covering me when I feel like I'm being attacked. I cannot stand. When it feels like my head is spinning and my mind is racing. And my ears are listening to the wrong things. Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, says this. Whoever dwells. That doesn't sound like rush to me. 
That doesn't sound like stress to me. That doesn't sound like, oh my goodness, I'm freaking out. Dwells. What is dwelling? This is dwelling. You know? Like a king walking in a palace. It's dwelling. Nothing is chasing him. Everybody else is, the king is on. I'm dwelling. Listen to this. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will what? Yes, it stands there. Will what? Rest. Rest In the shadow of the Almighty. Let me tell you, there's a shadow bigger than your shadow. There's a shadow bigger than your darkest emotions and feelings. His name is Almighty God. And he's looking at you this morning and he's saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me that I can take you through this dark valley? Do you trust me that when you're experiencing trouble, I am Jehovah Shammah, a very present help in the time of trouble? Will rest in the shadow of the Almighty and I will say of the Lord. Who will say of the Lord? Me, I. When I'm resting In the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. And my fortress. My God in whom I trust. That's the question. The question this morning to you and I is. Do we trust the bigger shadow? Do we trust the one when I can't see anything that this good shepherd will lead me to still waters, will lead me to green pastures? Our problems start if we don't trust him. I said this before. If you think you're alone in your darkness, it's time to stop thinking. Can I, can I ask you, will you help me with this? Look at the person next to you and say, stop thinking. I actually, actually, you know, it's actually something like switch off your brain. Not, not switch on, switch off, right? Now, 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 let, now, hear me out. Because sometimes our minds don't want to trust him. I want to say this to you. Let your spirit speak louder than your mind. And remember what he has done for you in the past. Because, Psalm 91, verse 14 and 16, he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. You see, your rescue plan has already been sorted. Your rescue has already been sorted. I will protect him. Your protection has already been sorted. Why? Because I rest in the shadow of the Almighty. For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. Your answer is already sorted. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You want to thank him. Just where you are, just close your eyes. Just thank him. Say, Lord, thank you for being the biggest shadow. Just we are. Come on, church. I want you. I know this is. There's no soft music playing, and this and that and the other. Blah 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 blah. Don't you just want to say, Lord, I thank you that I can rest in your shadow. And I will say of the Lord, You are my fortress, and You are my God. You are my strong foundation, the one in whom I trust. I thank you, Lord, that when I call to you. You answer me. And I thank you that you are with me in my trouble.